You're listening to Analog Assault, a video game podcast by Mulehorn Gaming. Welcome to the Analog Assault Podcast, your destination for video game talk, movies, and large explosions. I'm Wade, also known as Mulehorn117, or am I, am I ma- the Master Chief? Who am I? The Master Mule 117 Yeah. Junior Chief. <laughs> <laughs> We're on episode 28, and tonight I have with me Alex, a.k.a. Circuit 8. Hey. We also have Kurt, a.k.a. Dirt, Dirty Bombs. <laughs> Hi. Just like. <laughs> And, yeah, it was a slag. And we also have our bro, T Prime. What's up, man? I'm more beard than man. But You're I'm more beard. beard than man. It's true. <laughs> well, guys, we are live every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time at Mixer.com forward slash Mulehorn Gaming. And speaking of Mixer, check out our friends and teammates at theshedteam.com. So, fellas, it's been a week. How you been? What you been playing? How's it? it Good. Has. Been a week? Yes, it's been a week. That's right. Just wow. like uh, just like last week, uh, Far Cry and more Far Cry, but well, less Far Cry. I haven't played as much. I've actually been sleeping more, and I feel so good about that. Every time a new game comes out, you lose a bunch of sleep. That is true, and, and my body's catch catching up. Like seriously, bro, put to sleep. You know what? As a matter of fact, I'm putting to sleep. <laughs> but I wake up at midnight, and my kids are like, "Oh, dang it." <laughs> Cool. Sleep, so. so that's that's it, man. Far Cry and no well, sleep. Well, I mean, I've, I've caught up on the Expanse recently, and I've uh, been watching. Oh, the, yeah. a little behind on Krypton, a little behind on The Walking Dead, but uh, yeah. finished Lost in Space. And after I got past the first few episodes, I were kind of, I uh, wasn't sure how it was going to be. It ended up being Everybody's... very, very solid yeah. Uh, uh, series. Yeah. I've seen everybody say that. Yeah, I felt first the same way. Episodes are meh, but then it gets pretty good. Yep. Yep. yep, I agree. Yep. I haven't done it yet. yet. I'm in the middle of uh, season three of the X Files. Oh, Actually, nice! Season three. Yeah, yeah. Bla- going all the way through the whole series. Yeah, and apparently, uh, Kumail Nanjiani from uh, shoot, well, you guys should know who he is, and I should know what this show is called, uh, Silicon Valley. He actually has a podcast where he does an episode for each episode of the X-Files because he's apparently a really big X-Files fan. Nice. Yeah. Um, besides that, I started playing Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Nice. And that game is scaring the shit out of me. It's awesome. And, oh my god. I only yeah. want to play it when I'm home alone. <laughs> so, what you're saying is... the best times to play it. Download it with the headlights. Or the headlights. The headphones on and the lights off. <laughs> Oh, man. Headlights. It, How do you do the headlights in your house? You can do the headlights too if you want. <laughs> you know, headlights. You headlights, you like that, right? headlights. Yeah, yeah. You'll you'll be quite aroused when you play. No, it's it's really a beautiful game, but it's a, a lot of morbid, dark, fire, death, scary stuff, and it's really good though. Really, yeah. really insanely good. I'm I'm having a blast, but it's. It's scary. <laughs> well, I'll have to give it a shot sometime in the near future. But otherwise, I got got a war locked and loaded, ready to fire at the blow. Oh, that was for you, Scarecrow, dang. because yeah. I understand your reference for Brent versus Blue. So that'll be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I mean, I'll be dragging my butt to work, literally dragging it. Yeah, yeah I still haven't listened to that Norse podcast that you told me to. I just don't have. I hadn't had the time lately. It is, mm-hmm. it is so good, man. If I had an actual drive into work, I'd pop it on. But it's just. I live like 10 minutes away from work now, so. How long are the episodes? Um, 45 minutes. I'd yeah, squeeze some one are, lunch. are not that long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> but um, otherwise, no, I haven't really been playing a whole lot of games, so I played a little bit of Origins when I have time, but I've been doing a lot of drawing lately. So, yeah. as Didn't you he... may have noticed from the recent shout-out from... Pickle Wick. Yes. Yeah. That was a solid that gem up. That mm-hmm. was nice. That was nice. 
That was really funny. That was cute. <laughs> I had fun cute. drawing that. Yeah. Hey, Dirty Bombs. Yeah. Didn't he also play some uh, Destiny? Oh, yeah. I actually did play Destiny. That's right. I keep forgetting. I keep, I keep wasting my time on that game. You just blocked it out of your mind. I do. It's just like <laughs> one year out the other. Like, yeah, I did play Destiny. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got wrecked. Underdog wasn't even there for it. What's he talking about? I will say the Hunters were on the top most of the time. Yeah. No, they weren't. Yeah. So. No, they weren't. <laughs> Well, that's cool. That's cool, man. Boy, I miss having that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter life, yeah. 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 Lock life. All the way. Lock life. That's why Underdog is going to lose. Ready, be ready for it. We may stream it May 8th. Come custom games. Underdog and I are, in fact, going to do a 1v1. And the entirety of the internet's. Nice. See the internet will see. Watch. They will they rejoice. Lose. <laughs> Epically. <laughs> and you know what? We're going to have to put a little bit of a PG-13 to R rating on it, because I'm probably going to swear a lot. That's yeah. not like you at all. That's I anticipate you swearing a lot, too. You see, had you actually been there during that Iron B Banana match, there well, was a lot of raging. I heard there was one match where you may have Dude. either dropped your controller and walked away, or threw I, it, or... <laughs> I, kept, I played through the rage, all right? Dude. I swear to God, I hadn't tried the game since the since the last update, right? And everything's super fast and super quick and whatnot. And apparently the Dawnblade is a new thing to do for the Warlocks. So I tried the Dawnblade. Well, Dawnblade. It's not my thing. But I tried it. I'm like, all right, yeah, it's pretty quick. I like it. And then some little douchebag of a Titan decided to say, hey, I'm going to take your entire goddamn super to my face. Yeah. And live through it. No. Yeah. No. Sorry, no. Don't fucking care what anyone says. That shit does not happen. <laughs> that was the epitome of my rage that night. Yeah. I heard it was some pretty epic epicness there. Yeah. So yeah. I got the tail end of it, so I didn't get the, the good stuff. I mean there were there were still some still some good good old fashioned dirty rage and underdog says that his goal is to make dirty come up with a new swear word that he never <laughs> has said before. <laughs> that sir is a lofty goal. Yeah, but I will is. do my best just for you. Yeah, it happens every other day. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've been like you guys, mostly just kind of bouncing around. I haven't got to get back into Far Cry Five in a while, but uh, <laughs> so surprised. Played some Destiny. Played some <laughs> Overwatch. And oh man, it was a really fun night the other night. Um, I jumped on with Sully and uh, Dwayne from Three Beers and a Mic. Yep. Three Bam. And uh, Johnny Cage 85, 85, there we right. go. And Johnny Cage 80 fries. 80 fries? 80 fries. <laughs> That's a, dude, fries. you should change your, your gamer tag to Johnny Cage 80 fries. 80 fries. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he'll do it for a day. Right? Yeah. So we were playing Halo, and, and dude, that was, oh, man. I forget how fun Halo is. It's just so stinking fun. So we had, we had a blast doing that. But, uh, yeah, man, you know, lately it hasn't been as much gaming. It's been more TV shows. Like, Sci-Fi yeah. Channel has been killing it, man, mm -hmm. with Krypton and it, The Expanse. Like, I watched both of those episodes today, uh, one, like, early morning, one while I was at lunch, and I was just like, dude, these are, they're just good. They're just so That last episode of Expanse I just finished today. Right? Wow. That right. was in the feels, man, just it's like season three there's like you know what we can dial it up and they dialed it up yeah Dang. i didn't know you guys were all still watching that i need to catch up oh dude so it's I so through season two it's like it's like a mini mass effect basically it's like yeah you know it, you take game of thrones and you smash it with mass effect and you smash it really good together <laughs> smash it really <laughs> good. exactly you guys read the books are you, are you any of you reading those no, I yeah. should though, because I mean, I like that universe. It's really interesting. Some of the, mm -hmm. like the, I guess you could say, lore in the show. So yeah, yeah. Well, I think they've done a really good job with the society and how it might actually could happen. Play out, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. minus the Big crazy kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys also should dig into the magicians. They just finished season three, and it's going to be a year before season four or whatever comes See, out. I, so. I've watched like a, the first half of the first episode of season two. I'm just kind of like... Mm. You watch half an episode in the middle of... The, what are you doing, man? man? I watched the entire first season. It was okay. Oh, okay. It wasn't okay. that great. It, it, gets, it does get kind of crazy at that point, yeah. Yeah. 
Carpe's saying in chat it got canceled. What? No, it did not. Man, that would. That suck. must have just happened then. Oh. Like in the last day or something. I don't. I don't think that's. That would I'm gonna have to look that up. He's gonna. He's either... been advertising it. They got. They were supposed to have already gotten lit for the next season. That's either like the greatest troll ever or just. Uh... <laughs> yeah, send me a link so I can check that later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's been man. That's been me. It's mostly TV shows right now. I mean, I've, I'm yeah. obviously gaming, but man, those shows are just so freaking good. It's like, oh, Krypton's out. Okay. Okay, I'll go watch it. You know. And uh, I'm at the tail end of the, that last episode of Krypton, so I hadn't completely finished it, but they're really dialing it up already because the first couple of episodes were okay. Like, eh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll watch it because, you know, it's about Superman's family. But right. um, the last, was it like episode three? It was pretty good. It was good. So I'm, I'm starting to It was to actually get... like, like Zod and it's about Superman's grandpa, grandpa right? Yeah. yeah. House... Yeah. House L, House Zod, and Ra, and uh, the Winter Goddess. It's it's interesting lore getting into this. The Superman. Winter Goddess or the Sun God? No, there's like a Winter Goddess as well in episode. I may be huh. spoiling here. But yeah, you may be. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so how much is this based on comic stuff or like where what's the source of it like or are they just kind of yes. doing what they can it got yeah. me man i don't know i don't know which yeah. timeline which iteration which reboot right yeah which earth this came from i mean it's it's following some stuff with like brainiac and things like that so there is some like consistency there but right. other than that i don't know so okay. yeah but and a few housekeeping housekeeping want me fluff your pillow here before we uh move on to some game talk and that's we got a big announcement guys we're going to comic palooza in houston in may guys this is going to be freaking amazing anyways we're going there with three bam also known as three beers and a mic and our bros the nerd foo uh so you know steven sully Dwayne, myself we're going to go be on a podcast panel it's called ready set podcast we're working on some giveaways from some people and stuff like that. So if you're in Houston, come check it out. It's going to be awesome. Um, they just confirmed they're actually going to have Spider-Man there. So they're going to have Tom there. Uh, they're, they're going to have quite well, a the few. The current Spider-Man. Yes, the current yes. Spider-Man. And I don't know. I mean, there might be. Uh, I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. But I think it was Dwayne that was saying when Tom goes one place, usually there's someone else that goes with him. Oh, and it like might be smash. it might be Cap, so oh. I might fanboy oh. out a little bit if oh. I see him. If I see yeah, Chris, I might be like, "Oh my gosh!" Yeah. Anyways, so this guy's uh, sweating and mumbling in the corner. Um, <laughs> I mean, who's that guy? If you give me Toby Maguire, you give me nothing. That's yeah. Real. Yeah. Oh, dude, Tom was better than Toby. So. Yeah. 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 I haven't seen him. Yeah, he was good. It was a real. It was probably the best Spider-Man I've seen so far. Nailed it. I mean, it wasn't yeah. that hard to beat Tommy McGuire, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to exactly after carpe. Three, after three was just a little bit stupid. Yeah. It was I'm, just the swoop and everything. Yeah. Like, but I'm emo now. I <laughs> can't tell you guys, if you're in Houston, though, you need to show up because there's already a few com confirmed giveaways. One of those is going to be a Freedom Frag from Bottle Breacher. Dude, so. I'll, I'll be posting some pictures of that on our social media, so make sure you're following us for that. I also want to mention right before that weekend, we're going to do a charity stream right here on our Mixer channel on the 20th and the 21st for StackUp, StackUp.org. Really great organization. They help out a lot of active duty military and also veterans. Uh, they do so much stuff for that community. And so we're just going to help them out, try to raise some money. We got an initial goal set for $500. We got a few streamers lined up so far. We got our bro Lupo. Who's a mixer streamer? We got Snake Doctor. We got myself. We got Underdog. We got Scarecrow. So if you're interested in it, just reach out to us at Mulehorn Gaming on Twitter. We can uh, help you out with that. But uh, other than that, guys, just want to say if you like all this, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Mulehorn Gaming. So, fellas, T Prime, I know you and me and our boy here, Dirty Bombs. Not so much circuit, just because he doesn't own a PS4 yet. Yet. Same. But God of War! It's almost here! Well, if you're listening to this, it's here! 
right? <laughs> or if you're watching it, it's almost here. <laughs> yeah. I I can't I can't put into words how excited I am. I mean, when this first was announced, I'm like, wow, this looks pretty awesome. I'd never played God of War three. I played God of War two. Uh, back with me and Daniel, aka Donuts Nineteen, were living together on the PS2. Yeah. But the more I saw it played out, the more I saw how it was more over the shoulder, real close combat, open world ish. And then Johnny Cage, the great guy that he is, suggested the um, Lost Pages of North Smith uh, podcast. Yeah. And from the very first episode, I was hooked. Um, the Lost Pages of Norse Myth. Norse myth yeah so is this actually related to the god of war devs at all yes it's uh they have the they have the video version of the audio and on this podcast it's that interview it's that it's they it's this guy reading it and then on the second part of the episode they actually interview a dev they got the audio crew one episode Uh, okay technical crew one episode gameplay in the next episode nice for eight episodes and they go in depth the last episode they actually interview the voice for Kratos and the voice for Atreus. And when I found out who Kratos was, Christopher Judge from uh, Stargate, I was like, "Nice, dude. But no, I was really excited because that guy's voice is like epic. Golden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So by listening this uh, through this, it tells you basically the backstory leading up to what you're about to encounter. It doesn't oh, spoil dude. anything. Okay. Um, doesn't really tell you what happened to Kratos between three and now, but it basically it basically paints you a picture for you of the new landscape you're going to be in in the Norse world since you're done and have completely killed off the Greek pantheon. Um, yeah, let's just say that Zeus and Thor, what you know from Marvel, no, no, it's totally, totally different. Yeah, these yeah. are some. Some bad dudes that and Thor and Odin. Thor and Odin. Sorry. Oh yeah, bad Zeus. mofos. Yeah, they they uh they're on a wrecking crew. They're they're a wrecking havoc. That are off to wipe the, the giants out. Odin's turned into a mad king. Thor is just slaying people left and right. No mercy. It's uh, it's pretty intense. I mean, it's... mythology in general doesn't mess around, but yeah, Thor and Odin have been whitewashed more or less for the yeah. For the yeah. comic I mean, world. If you've seen Ragnarok and, you know, the scene where they, what's uh, Thor's uh, sister breaks down the ceiling and shows, you know, Odin's yep. past triumphs. It's kind of that Odin, the Mad mm. King rule in the nine realms. It's more likened to that one. Yeah. 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 The Odin and Thor from Marvel are not the ones from like. No, <laughs> no, I, I definitely yeah. learned that in these eight episodes. He's yeah. not, um, not a nice guy. No, not at all. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the flip side, though, uh, all the dev interviews, these guys have put so much work into it that they even hired, um, uh, is it not Norwegian, but um, yeah, Norse, the, or is the, it um, the uh, I is it Netherlands? I think the Netherlands um, chorus, audio group to sing all the hmm. music. The closest thing they the closest people they could find to to um, you know Norse or Vikings. Yeah. And they that is the people singing and then the the how they changed the gameplay how they changed every aspect of god of war they put a crap ton of work into this and i think it's gonna blow everybody away thus the tin the, all the tins yeah 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 um need to say after nine episodes i am i'm beyond pumped yeah i actually pre-ordered a game again uh, yeah, and our bro, awesome. he, our bro here, Dirty Bombs, is actually going to be reviewing it for us and typing up a little review on the website. So, Dirty, I want to hear what are you looking forward to? What are you a little, maybe, uh, you know, you're you're known as being a very good critic here, very balanced. So, I'd say a critic, maybe a good critic, a critic in a good way. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I can approach a game that's unbiased. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. I have bad things about Origins. I remember writing a view about uh, Syndicate, both games that mm. I've thoroughly enjoyed that had things that just yeah pissed me off. They were good reviews. I like them. I mean, 
I'm not gonna wipe someone's ass. And be like, this game's the best thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, I was wouldn't expect me. it. Do you have some golden nah. toilet paper? Here you go. Right. <laughs> um. Well, he, that used to say that they didn't really cover what Kratos was doing in between three and four. No, basically all they touched on was the fact that Kratos was there to to spread the ashes of his former wife, mm -hmm. mother of his child, and He's about to get caught up in all. He's about to get caught up in Odin and Thor's war, but mm -hmm. they don't say. And I know how it left off in three, mm -hmm. and they implied that it was dead. You know that he died, but apparently he didn't die, and they didn't say how. So we're gonna find out. Interesting. Fair enough. Well, I'm kind of curious to see how they explain why he's in the Netherlands or wherever it is that might be taking place. Why they're targeting Asgard. Asgard. North, or, Norse sorry, mythology. Sorry, Midgard. Well, regardless, why they're targeting Norse mythology. I was like, how they they got to where he is. Wherever he is. The <laughs> Netherlands? What are you guys right. talking about? You know, he's in the UK. say how to Darrow, that's all. <laughs> Different countries. You know, <laughs> make sure the website's all right. Yeah. Nordic countries. Yeah. There you go. I actually haven't played a God of War game since God of War 1. Back on the PS2. Oh, dang. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm coming into this pretty cold. And I'm going to preface that in the review and be like, all right, I have no idea what's going on in this game after that first installment. Well, there's a video I need to send you on YouTube. It's a, a God of War in seven minutes. It explains what happened basically in God of War 1, 2, and 3, or all the all the games leading up to this. So that's what I had to do to catch up. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I was like, I... I... All the gods petty shit and killed everyone. And then some. That's pretty much that's what I know. <laughs> lots, it was of, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, Zach, you're sick dead. Sick of your drama and it's affecting me. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna bang you. I'm gonna kill you. Bang you. Kill you. Like a mythological John Wick. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm really just looking forward to a really good single player game because that's kind of what I'm, what I focus on now is single player games just because I just. I've fallen off with PvP for the most part. Yeah. So, if they can explain to me why he is, you know, in Midgard, or, again, why they're targeting Norse mythology, and what exactly is going to go down with this, if and if they introduce some sort of a little bit of loving into open world, it's like I said, if they have uh, horizon level open world, I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. I'd be very happy. I think it's going to be not quite that level, but not linear by any means. That's good. So, like, open world, kind of like Halo open world, or? <laughs> Somewhere in between Halo and Horizon Zero Dawn, there'll be um, various paths that, you're, that lead you towards, um, but there's also, in each of these areas, places you can go off and explore. But there's a main hub area that is very expansive that you go to back and forth to do things. It has a lot of area to explore that if you don't, you can power through the campaign and miss all these side quests. Um, the end game will be harder for you, but they encourage you to explore the entire game, and apparently there's enough room to do it. Explore, I shall. So yeah. the side quests, oh, yeah. the other little auxiliary things, you actually contribute to the ending of the game. Yeah, it's gonna, it'll, make you, it'll make it a lot easier for you to beat it. I mean, I'm huh. kind of that completionist. When If there's areas to explore right. before the end of the game, you, you goddamn well believe I'm going to go explore those areas. Yeah. You're a completionist. Oh, yeah. You know, in that sense, yes. Yeah. Oh, I I'm a, know it's good stuff to find in most games, yeah. right? Yeah. Look around. I'm a completionist for about 12 hours. <laughs> 12 hours? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, new game, this game. Yeah. So the poll was correct. <laughs> <laughs> Closer to six, as Nate, Nate John says in the chat. So, How yeah. many hours have you put into Far Cry 5? You know, I would actually, I'd have to actually get on the Xbox app and look, because I'm not sure. I mean, I've gotten all the way to almost killing Faith. I've killed John. I almost got Faith done. Like, I got probably three-fourths of the way with her, because I started there. So, I mean, it. I don't know how much more I got, but yeah. Well, Kingdom Come Deliverance. <laughs> oh my gosh! So I didn't, I didn't get it for myself. It was, that's, that's I got a tough game. Yeah. Combined between Xbox and PlayStation, probably about fourteen to eighteen hours in that game. 
but uh, what, 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 the only thing I was really worried about is the micromanaging, which I just couldn't handle. Like the There's rest of the game, freaking mm -hmm. fantastic. Like I love the, uh, the open worldness, the exploring, the armor, the look of the, uh, like this, the scenery, uh, the storytelling was great, but to uh, the micromanaging, it really slowed me down. Here I am looking, I'm looking for, uh, there was a lot of micromanaging micro mechanics. Yeah. That, that it kind of bogged me down a little bit. Micromanaging what exactly? Like troops or stats? No, your st your stats and your stamina, your personal stats, oh, okay. your, your sleep, your your um your your um your health. How much you've eaten? Don't eat too much. Don't eat too little. Get enough sleep. Um, do this and do that. And if you don't do this in a certain amount of time, this will happen. Right. You can't can't really stop playing the game because the stuff will happen anyway. A little too Crazy. realistic. Yeah, sense. it was it was very realistic. Yeah, so I'm looking here on the app, and it says I have, uh, when it comes to actual achievements, forty percent of achievements in over eighteen hours hmm. of uh, play on uh, Far Cry. So, okay, yeah, so that's not bad, right? Uh, not bad. Yeah, not, not, are not too bad. High, high on the average. Yeah. I wonder <laughs> what it would say if you pulled up Skyrim, man. I mean, can you not? Well, can you not dedicate enough time to these new games without going back to Overwatch or Destiny for? Uh, well, Skyrim, I probably have a lot because it kind of goes between 360 and Xbox One because I have the remaster as well. So if you're looking at just the remaster, let's see here if I can find it. I don't think it doesn't give me a time. It just gives me the achievement list. I was just saying 18 hours really isn't that much. Eh, it's good for me. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, relatively. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, moving on. I know we're all hyped for God of War, so uh, we're pretty excited for that. But Iron Banana is here. Or Iron Banner, as other people know it, from Destiny 2. Love you, Banana. And, you know, I got to say, man, it felt good to do 6v6 again. And it felt yeah, like it, it gave me a little bit of the feels back with... Um, D1. So, I mean, obviously you still got the mechanics of D2, but it felt good and it felt like we're getting in the right direction. Uh, um, the 6v6 and the little bit faster mechanics, is that bringing it back for you? Yeah, I mean, the 6v6, the quicker, I mean, it just made, it sped up the PvP for me. Um, so, uh, that's that's what it, what, why I liked it. It sped up the PvP because with 4v4, with the maps as the size they are, you can just right. sit and camp all day and it takes forever mm -hmm. to find anybody to fight. And if you push out to try to find them, I mean, you're dead because the team shooting, you know, you peek a corner and you got four guys with Midas that hit you in the head, you're done. So, yeah. I've seen some people saying that they don't think the maps were made for six. There were so, a couple in the rotation that were not 6v6 friendly. Yeah, they yeah. weren't. Some of the maps were okay. I, they still need to work on some of the spawns because there was one time where I was holding a point and the whole team spawned behind me because we wiped their team. But <laughs> So it can get a little hectic on the smaller maps yeah. probably. But it made it really fun. Like it felt way better. Like Nate Johns is saying in the in the chat, it, it, it felt better and was fun. Um, it's not as fun as, like he said, mayhem, but... Right. It, it did just feel a lot more fun. It felt a little more D one ish, you know. Yeah. So. D one ish. D one ish. Okay. So I want to mention Bungie is actually flying out quite a few content creators to a summit. So yeah, what's this about? D, D, <laughs> what is this about? <laughs> I was like, what are they doing? Didn't they do this? Do you think this is a good? I mean, what I think it's for <laughs> is dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty oh lost God. it here. Oh. Jumbaloo, there you go. It's not that. It's not what you think. Oh, it's Brainwashing. Not. It's going to look like <laughs> Clockwork Orange where he has the thing. Of, <laughs> watch our game. <laughs> Play our game. Promote our game. Love our game. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was going to say, Carpe Adam, in chat, is that it worked for The Division. It could work for Destiny because, hey, if this is for the fall update they're going to do, they have enough time to... Take this feedback, push it all in. So what do you think? Do you think this is something that Bungie needs to do? you think it's going in the right dire direction? Or do you think it's too late? Streamers and content creators 
another word for them is influencers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's really all this is, is Bungie wants them on their side so that they can go out there and stream some D2 and get it back into the hands of the common populace. People see people streaming the game, oh, well maybe I want to play it again this week, like, instead of never. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know what they're going to do with this, truthfully. Like, what's what's their end goal? I think updates, you know, take in community feedback. Not go changes. bankrupt. <laughs> There's no community feedback as well, it is right now. It's, yeah, so, why it's take everything that they feedback. don't want to hear. They don't listen. Yeah. Exactly. Or they well, listen too much and they change they too do. much and it's not what – and they overcorrect. It's, it's right. What good at. They over-fucking-correct. That's what I think, too. They definitely tend to overcorrect or not do anything that people actually wanted in the right way. Right. Not yeah. the way that they wanted. Yeah. You know, so so I wish they would stick to their guns or do what people actually ask for. Right. Exactly. But it's something in the middle. Really, I'd rather them just stick to their guns. Be like, this is the game that we made. Either you play it or you don't. I'm kind of tired of them give, being all wishy-washy. Be like, oh, sorry, guys. We hurt too many of your feelings. We'll give you back randomized guns again. Like, yeah, we okay. had a really good conversation in our Discord uh, today with our bro Crackseed, and you're you're starting to get it to feel a little more powerful again as a guardian. Sure. And mm. what we're all saying and we're thinking is, don't complain when you say that's OP, because this is what you wanted. You wanted right. to feel powerful again, you know. Right. So, yeah. Well, that which could turn everyone back into glass cannons. Exactly. But yeah. That the speed, the freneticism, the, the strength you feel like you have when you wipe a whole team with a super, that's what kept it interest. Plus the, the weapon grind. I think people actually missed that damn weapon grind. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Many yep. did. Many did. And what's with all the uh the exotic updates I've been seeing them post about? Oh and all the exotic weapons need to be changed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because because they were boring and sucked. <laughs> <laughs> this is part of making you feel a little more powerful. So, yeah, yeah. You know they're actually making some of the exotics exotic. Oh, who would have thought? Leopard right? print. <laughs> Leopard print, baby. That'll yeah. do. Wait, it. you say exotic it makes me think of something that's not exotic in the game, but it's exotic. Carry on. Yeah. Leopard <laughs> skin like for guns. You got it from Pier One. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Could be a Brazilian. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. hunters do dance on poles. I mean, this is true. Oh. Get a little, little throwing money emote going on there. Like, <laughs> That's a triple on radio sing, you know, That's... <laughs> Right. Right. Graviton Lance. And yeah. then you got the Dong Blade. The Dong Blade. Yeah. I did see in one video um, that there is a, some kind of exotic gun that had dual purpose to it, where if you're aiming down sights, it was precision uh, hits, and, but if you did hit fire, it actually was explosive damage, which is like, that's a pretty good concept that I've not seen in Destiny before. Yeah, that's the... The, uh, the Cabal Scout the, Rifle? No, Underdog put it right there. It's it, the Skyburner's Oath. That yeah. gun yeah. is awesome. I, mean, I have it. I haven't used it though. Yeah, it's the one that's supposed to be good at killing Cabal or was from yeah. there. Or yeah. yeah, but the way it looked like in the video they were posting is like when you just hip fire, it shoots out these huge explosive rounds, and I was like, oh. explosions! Yes, <laughs> I always liked that gun, but it didn't really perform as well as it felt. I think. Yeah, I mean, right now it it, it it's is that what she said. Not that great, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it feels like they're going in the right direction, right? So, I mean, at least it does for me a little bit. Uh, I mean... Content is king, man. All this stuff is nice. All this stuff is great. But what am I doing with it? So, let me ask you then. What's one thing you guys would add to D2 to bring you back? More I grind. expansion isn't awful. Make it D3. Make it D1 again, honestly. <laughs> I just I'm just hope that the war mine has some stuff that lets people play content, story content and missions that are good and challenging for a while and has a reasonable grind associated with it. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't feel like you have to pay to win like the holiday things, you know, which are not okay, not a replacement. 
it's good. It's all well and good, but I was kind of disappointed with Osiris. I got through it really quickly and then realized, oh, this is just a, a generated dungeon thing. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. It's cool to see him and everything, but it was. I felt like he was reduced to this instead of a potentially super epic thing. Anyway. Yeah. So I hope Warmind's good. That's that's what I hope. I hope it's good and the rest of the DLCs are good and on schedule. So schedule. what about you, T Prime? I mean, you hadn't touched the game in a long time. What would bring it back for me is if for some reason I lost every other game I have. <laughs> <laughs> Digitally, you lost the digital games. Yeah, his Xbox like, crashed. Xbox and take your keys back. <laughs> yeah, I like that's I'll, a I'll, mama's joke waiting to happen. All of a sudden, my hard drive's empty and my cabinet's empty of my few heart, my few actual discs. I'm like, okay. okay, let's do Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, what if all of your bros were playing it consistently again and they were like, "Dude, it's so good, you got to give it a shot." I'll I'll jump in for the next DLC. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I did last time too. And for a hot minute. Game share, baby. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So I would say for me, uh, what would make Destiny 2 better would be if they would just put a Diablo-style loot system in there. Um, the reason why I say that is because I would love to just have more variety. It's not enough vault space for that shit, man. You know, there no, there's not. Space. But if they don't do that, then then give us back the reroll ability. You know, mm -hmm. put in a weapon forge where we can reroll. You know. Yeah, so I don't have to loot a thousand of this gun. Let me spin something and reroll it. Yeah, I would be way more into that. Or like the division, you can like change it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Switch one of the stats. Yeah. Or if there's a drop feature like the division. You know, you got this. Hey, I got mm. this five times. I don't, I don't think it. I don't think giving or trading should ever be a thing in Destiny. No, because then it just oh. completely omits. It omits the entire purpose of the grind itself. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and people will be selling that stuff. So yeah. what you just heard me said, just scratch that out. People will sell it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Douchebag nation, thy name is Destiny at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> Will you guys jump back in for Warmind DLC? Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'll try it out. Yeah. Like, like I always say, I shouldn't be able to criticize something as harshly as I do unless I suffered through it myself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I hope it's good. Good, 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 good. Well, let's good. put on record that I will actually play the entirety of the content. You're going to have to catch up first. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to play through the story, the Osiris, and Osiris. then... I've already beaten up. Osiris. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Oh, okay. Two all characters, right. I believe. Just two. All right, all right. Fair. So, all right, guys. Well, we're moving into our next segment here, which is called Shots Fired. We ask you guys, the listeners or the viewers, to send us your questions, comments, thoughts with hashtag Ask and Log, and we'll just chat about it here with you right now on the show. Shots Fired. Yeah. So, our first one here, and we're, this is going to... Keep it a little real here. This is this is gonna bring it down to the real level here. Real talk. And you know this is important because this guy was a very um, large person in the Xbox community. Very positive guy. Very positive guy. He's made a big impact with a lot of people in the Xbox community. And and that of course we're talking about uh, Xbox addict. So, yep. Yep. Um, but Carpe Adam sent this in. So we're just gonna get it real right here for a real second. He says the Xbox community lost a well-known and beloved member this week. His impact was so great that many changed their Twitter profile picture in his honor, including Phil Spencer himself. When things like this happen, it's a reminder of our own mortality and the limited time we have on this earth. How important is your legacy as a gamer, as a person? Are they different? And how do you want to be remembered? Your legacy as a gamer. I mean, boy, these are just not questions you asked yourself 20 years ago. No. Right? I mean, the internet's changed a lot, and assuredly was one of the reasons this guy was able to touch so many people. Yeah. So many, I mean, in the industry and, and out of it. Right? I mean, I've, I saw Rod Ferguson, like you said, Phil Spencer, mm -hmm. Law, Aaron Greenberg. Aaron Greenberg, yep. Yeah. Uh, obviously a great guy and a, uh, a loss for the community. Uh, and Man, that is a tough question. Adam, I mean, you don't often 
have someone ask you to essentially write your own eulogy on the spot like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, if anything, I'd want to be remembered for uh, having people exercise their own critical thought, make up their minds for themselves, be critical, but enjoy things. Yeah. You know, never stop learning. What else can I say? That, yeah. That's kind of the secret of life to me. Yeah. I can feel that too. You know, I'll I remember for being a positive, you know, influence in the community, someone who goes out of the way to help others to help see their success versus my own. And, you know, seeing how I came across knowing this guy via social media, I didn't know him personally or very well, but seeing his impact, I also realize there's so many people on the opposite side that are who bring, you know, pounds and pounds of salt and trollness and like I hope these people at least catch a glimpse of this and like maybe I shouldn't be the way I am. Maybe I should try to strive to be a little more like this guy and mm -hmm. maybe we'll see some positive come out of this unfortunate tragedy. Yeah. We can hope. Yeah. Mr. Dirty, any thoughts on this? I mean, I don't really know him. I mean, I followed him on Twitter, but <clears throat> I mean, from people from Phil Spencer changing his picture, that's that's a that's impressive that he had that much of a reach and that much of an impact on people. Even that, I don't know how I want to phrase this. Important. I'm, I mean, yeah. I don't yeah. want to make him I well don't want to make known. He had friends in high places. Yeah. yeah. He, he had some well known friends. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. My legacy as a person? Like, I don't know. <laughs> the Dirty Bombs major as, major. As a gamer, I honestly don't care, truthfully. Like, yeah. I play games for fun. But, yeah. I don't know. So you'll just fade away into a big salt lake. Honestly, I'd rather make more of an impact with the stuff that I do outside of gaming. Yeah. Like your art and things like that. My art, this. It's a fair statement. Yeah. It's all tied into gaming, granted. But... Yeah. Right. And yeah. I think that's that's the the bigger case in point is that gaming facilitates all the rest of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like yeah, we you may go and play a game and you don't give a hoot, but it's also enabled you to I mean it, it has do all of this fueled the drive to go back to school for it and finish yeah. school for it so yeah nice it's a positive yeah. force in the world yeah i mean i know the guy was a very positive guy and uh you know made a really good impact on the community and as far as myself mr carpe adam it kind of all ties down to the uh how do you want to be remembered for me myself i am a gamer but it's not all of who i am um you can follow my personal twitter and you'll get to know me pretty good on that subject um but for me i i hope that when i'm done it's just not about gaming that i've made a relationship with you guys that lasts forever and that i've made some kind of positive impact on your life that's what i hope here with the podcast as well some people may make fun of me for being overly positive but that's just who i am and that's if you remember me that one day when i'm croaked and i'm in the coffin and dirty bombs is sitting there looking at me he's like man that meal he sure was a positive guy, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll ask the, uh, the, the the priest who was like, "Can I can I get one farewell tea bag in?" Real quick? <laughs> just, just for old times. Just one back. That's he would all. want it this way. <laughs> he would want it this way. <laughs> way. Believe oh me, God. just trust me. <laughs> just trust me on this, everyone. Avert just, your eyes. <laughs> just one moment, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, to the family. Thoughts and prayers with you. I know that's and the and people that were closest to him. I know that's really rough to lose a friend. So, yeah. All right. So moving on, our bro pseudonym says he says, "What games are most are you most embarrassed to have downloaded and purchased?" <laughs> if you want the and the seed, <laughs> the word is anecdote. Okay, anecdote <laughs> for okay, me. That's words. I know. Uh, I, the most embarrassing game I ever downloaded was Kim Kardashian Hollywood. Oh, no. <laughs> so, he beat the game in two weeks and then promptly deleted it. Okay, he, <laughs> he did it promptly. He says he did it to prove someone at work it was possible to beat it without spending any money on, oh. on micros. So there was a reason. That's good. <laughs> at least he said there's a reason. Yeah. yeah. Good cover, buddy. 
buddy. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I have one of those. You know? Not really, no. Yeah. Okay, so there's an MMO on Xbox uh, that, in hindsight, it's really just a, a picture of, like, this <laughs> anime girl on the front of it, Onigiri. And I downloaded it because it's a free game. And it was god-awful. And <laughs> anybody who looks at the tile, it, it looks like it's probably a porn. Uh <laughs> I'm like in the Xbox collection, and it's gonna be there, ready to download. Unfortunately. Yeah. You know, I have to go back and look at it. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm curious. Yeah. I don't think there's ever been a game I've been embarrassed to have, or just have. I mean, or rather, downloaded yeah. or purchased. I mean, embarrassed might be a different word. I feel regretful for downloading Dark Souls and spending money on it, Johnny. <laughs> but I'm um, not embarrassed. Yeah, it's not like yeah, you secretly listen to Fallout Boy or Backstreet Boys, you know, like <laughs> I mean you to be your... fair, I do have Lucky Boy Confusion radio on my Pandora. <laughs> so you have guilty pleasures. You hey know. man, hey, hey, that radio station has re enlightened me to songs of my youth. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is from the same guy that says I play old man music when I'm listening to Led Zeppelin and A C D C so it is old man music, but it's good. <laughs> we yep. said it was bad. It's old yeah. man music. Yeah. yeah. It's, that's why they call it classic rock. It's a that's nice right, way of baby. saying there you That's go. right. Yeah. So moving on to our next question here. We got a couple from Scoobaroo, which is, he's a cool streamer. You should go check him out. Anyways, he says, what do you think of IGN's rumored announcement of COD Black Ops 4 not having a campaign mode? Bob. So... Uh, and then he goes on, I'm going to just tack this on here. And he says, do you guys think there's a place for multiplayer BR style games? Or do you think there's too many devs are trying to ride the hype train oh, for multiple BR style games? Yeah. Okay. Mm. So black ops four, uh, not having a campaign. I mean, they'd really just be following suit with other games that have been releasing multiplayer only, but yeah, I think people true. have come to expect some sort of a campaign from Call of Duty games. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they'll be disappointed. Hopefully they won't uh, jump on the actual hate train for it like they did with the uh, my space faring Call of Duty and just like downvote everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it got burned. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Millions of dislikes. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. But I'm I'm kind of a circuit. It's, It's... Expected from Call of Duty, regardless of wh- whichever company makes it, Treyarch yeah. or yeah. Activision or whoever, the, whatever the two are, Sledgehammer or whatever. It's Activision it's... publishing it. They got money enough. It's not an issue of whether they can or can't or shouldn't do it. It would be purely they'd go, well, we don't need to because they'll still buy the shit anyway. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's my opinion. If they don't do it, that's it's kind of not quite spitting in your face, but spitting on your boots. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. a little chin music for me. All I know is that if there's no campaign in it, it better be just forty bucks. Right. It shouldn't be full price. It no. should not be full That's price. That's a fair point. You know. So I agree. If, if they want to go that route, okay, but make it forty bucks. You know, because that's basically all you're doing is is buying a multiplayer game that has micros in it. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. and if, look, if they're going to have micros, you're going to have a way to stay on that gravy train for months and months. Woof, Give woof, yeah. friggin' yep. campaign. Yep. And what, yep. Do you, what do you guys think about a uh, place for multiple BR-style games, Battle Royale-style ga- games? Man, I really think devs are just trying to ride the hype train on this, honestly. Yeah, I agree. You might sure. have one or two more good ones that come out and stand above the rest, but most of them are just going to be like, oh, it's another BR game, whatever. People will try it, I'm sure, because it's a BR game and it's the flavor of the week, but yeah. What, what like is is literally every dev company that wants to make one of these going to do something brand new every little time? Probably not. Nope. Nope. Yeah. I mean, what's new in in uh, Radical Heights? The the area dispersals a little bit different, and they it was like '80s. He's like, "What's in now? Oh, the '80s. Let's mm-hmm. do that." Yeah. And yeah. that leads me to my next question from our uh, Ask and Logins from our bro Cheesemo. He says, what's with all the Battle Royale boners? When did they stop calling it being called free-for-all? Hashtag Ask uh, Analog. Yeah. <laughs> He's well, right, though. 
you call it Battle Royale because you're not just copying the free-for-all, you're copying everything else to go with it. Jumping yeah. out of the plane yeah. or whatever, parachuting yeah. to the, the the circle perimeter coming closing in on you. Like You call it, it's a Battle Royale genre because you don't really want to say you're copying PUBG, but it's kind of what everyone's doing. Right. Yeah. Everyone else copied... Uh, uh, whatever League of Legends H1, was Z1, of. Oh, never mind. Yeah, H1Z1. Mobas. Yeah. Arma. Same, yeah, Arma with, with Arma MOBAs, Arma. they all copied the original style. MMOs, everyone just copied EverQuest. Come on. Yeah. Anarchy Online, like the old crappy ones, you know. And yeah. Look where they've, I mean, they had a limited shelf life. I, I kind of agree with what uh, Pal Warpig is saying in, in chat. It, for streamers, it's it's what's been driven why are you seeing a lot of battle royale type games? Because it's very streamable. It's very streamable. Yeah. It's easy to interact. It's fun. It's repetitive, but it's fun. But as a gamer, and as you guys know, squirrel, it just mm-hmm. feels like sometimes a same game, new skin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's probably why I didn't get as involved in Fortnite because yeah, there's different mm-hmm. things and things like that, but I, it's I, not I mean, different enough. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. huge different that I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. So you know, all these other games that are popping up, I'm probably just going to stick with PUBG, you yeah. know. I mean, that's hey. a really good point. It is a streamer-centric genre. I mean, I, I think of, uh, shoot, um, what's, what's CSGO, Counter-Strike. It doesn't look good. I don't care about that game. But if you're into competitive gaming, it's, it's big up there. Yeah. 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 Why is that? Yeah, I think now yeah. balanced. People respect it. It's you know slimmed down. I don't know. I don't know. If it's classic. I'm not sure. But why didn't Destiny come into that spot? Why didn't Halo, uh, Call of Duty slide? No, it's for some reason like at top level FPS esports tournaments. It's CS:GO. It seems to be the thing. Yeah. yeah. You know. I think Dirty also nailed it too. There'll be some more that come out. Maybe one or two that are gonna really shine. I think until they have another battle royale that is very different and changes, you know, the mechanics from how they end the map to how the gameplay goes, it's all going to be the same. Yeah, and I completely agree with what Warpig is saying in in uh, in our chat, and it's it is driven by media and streamers. You know, that's why you're mm-hmm. seeing uh, lots of B. And I just gotta say, if Destiny adds a BR mode. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, to be on it, it better be stop a it. battle rifle. Stop it. Right. Stop it. Just stop it right there. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. You know, so I'm kind of inclined to think that a lot of these companies that are making all these different BR games are kind of indie developers or ones that might have bigger publishing but aren't as well known because you don't see a lot of AAA studios making these BR games because they got bigger fish to fry. Yeah. It, I would consider Epic a AAA. Do, yeah, well. Do you also think maybe the reason why we're seeing like investors come in investing in BR modes is just because they don't know a lot about the game industry and they see something that's popular, they can make a quick, quick buck on it. So they're like, yeah, make a battle royale mode. You can make some money off that. Go. Yeah, it's that's like, like a that company. It showed up yeah, overnight and everyone wanted yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and was it like uh, Rocco Heights was developed in what, five months? I mean, it just came out of nowhere. Boom. Yeah. yeah, and who knows how much stuff for that game was already existing in another form. Yeah, or, true. You know, they just repurposed, because really, like, like... Fortnite, they pivoted different direction. Yeah, yeah, exactly like that, because you can make the Battle Royale mode in a lot of other games. Yeah. It doesn't just have to be FPS games, even. I mean, you, you're you having a Battle Royale mode that's going to be on Red Dead, so... Yeah. I mean, that's not the game itself, though. It's just kind of like an, a, a bonus. Right. But it's just funny how it's so like it's been driven so much by media and by streamers now that you're just seeing it mm-hmm. pop up in everything. Right. right. Everything. You know, give me an old fashioned horde mode back. Yep. A good Stop. horde mode. Yeah. yeah. We'll see when horde mode first hit the scene, what did Halo do? Firefight. Yeah. You know? It's the same thing. I mean, people have a formula, they want to see if it works for their own shit. So it's fine. Eventually it'll plateau. Yeah. Yeah. So our well, last a high plateau or a low plateau is, is the question, right? So this is our last, uh, ask analog. And then we're going to dive into the ones you guys have here in the mixer stream chat. 
And this is from a bro, Alamo Jack. And he says, question, Sony Microsoft forces you to change your gamer tag. Assuming all gamer tags are open, except for the current tag that you have, what do you choose and why? I'll go first because I've been trying to get Thaddeus Prime. I have Thaddeus Prime 1, and Thaddeus Prime <laughs> is not available, and I can't find it on any Microsoft format. And apparently, just because it's not on a viewable format doesn't mean it's not in use. I'm like, that's a bunch of garbage. Oh, so someone has it out there. Someone up there has that's it. Weird. Someone I is wonder... faking. I wonder if you like Jack made your account and didn't Jack activate Hole. it. I wonder how many people messaged that guy and were like, Thaddeus, I really love your beard. And they're like, thanks? It's like some 12-year-old, <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Please, guys, I really appreciate that. I've been working that. on it for a good solid minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I usually just go run with Circuit 8 on everything. I don't even try something else, so... I might try Circuit just to see. Be like, yeah, I'd be one of those cool guys who doesn't have any numbers in, in their name anymore. Uh, and there actually is an account called Circuit that's from the 360 days. It's been inactive for a long time. Oh, man. So, Didn't Xbox do that thing where they like, purged all inactive yeah. gamer takes from the last 10, 15 years? Yeah, they were supposed to stagger through them, so I haven't checked it in a while. <clears throat> huh. I know Probably my... some other asshat has it now. I know my brother, my older brother, got our, my original gamer tag that I lost between Halo 1 and Halo 2, which was just Mulehorn. So, mm-hmm. yeah. You can always just steal, a, steal it. Yeah. yeah. What about what about you, Dirty? I have no idea. I've been thinking about this all day, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, Ghost enjoy, of Onyx? I enjoy my gamer tag, mostly because it's something I've kind of grown into. So... Ghost of Onyx was my last gamer tag, just because. I based... remember those days. Yeah, yeah. it's good days. It was uh, based off Halo of the book, right? Halo book Ghosts of Onyx, okay. where the main character was named Kurt, and that's also where oh. my favorite number fifty-one came from because of him and also Sarge from Red vs. Blue are both tied to number fifty-one. Sarge. Yep. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'd have to potentially kind of keep going with the dirty bombs vibe or mix it up a little bit and just in you know encourage my inner rager to bring out and i don't know rager. give say no to rage and they Please uh, don't encourage your run inner for money out right now. yeah there you go yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> or a more fun version of ghost of onyx just because it's it's just it's too lengthy it's it's catchy but it's not a good Hey, catch this podcast with Ghost of Onyx and Mulehorn 117 and all this other jazz. Like, eh, it sounds like too serious of a gamer tag, you know? Mod Light says change it to Dirty Sanchez. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> be able to get away with that. Uh, for me, you know, this is going to be taking it back because this original gamer tag came from uh, one of the first games me and my older brother played, which was Ultima back on the Tandy 1000 days, that PC there. But, uh, when you listen to his old man music. Yeah, when you listen to old man music. But uh, I would have to say, and it's a character uh, in, in one of the first games, Shimano. I would love to have that as a gamer tag because it's really kind of... just she, man, with an O at the end? Yes, <laughs> Shimano. I think it would be cool, man. Like, not a lot of people would have that gamer tag. Don't make fun of me, man. <laughs> but yeah, I think it would be Shimano cool. Shimano e Shimano. It'd be... Original that or ILO, I would like to have that as a gamer tag. That was another character, so uh, I okay. like those names. I like those original names, though. Yeah. yeah. So moving on to our mixer questions, <laughs> Scarecrow Twenty One <laughs> says, "How does Mule feel about being on a podcast with three warlock mains?" Small. You know, man, I have this thing called a mule pack. I just shove them right in, and we just go. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not part of the pack that you're shoving in. <laughs> I'm part of the main pack. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're okay guys, I guess, you know, so. Hey, it just means you got three support classes for when you come running back halfway dead. You know, yeah. it, it, what no it is, more Jenkins. I'm down. <laughs> I just, what I do is I sip around, uh, sit around and I just sip on my drink, let them do all the hard research. And they're like, we got to figure out how to kill this guy. And I'll be like, we're out of bad guys. 
I'm gonna do a horn jenkins it. Seventeen times in order to try to figure it out. I come back it took and I'm me like, twenty times, but I okay, got it. We figured it out, and I'm like, it's done. <laughs> How many yeah. times did you try doing it, Mule? One hundred and seventeen, huh? That's, Maybe. That's about right. Well, we're still splitting the loot four ways. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, Mule can have the scraps. Yeah. So, <laughs> so our, moving on to our next one here, and you guys in the chat, feel free to just drop a question because we got a few more here. But uh, underdog. Or excuse me, PT Maverick says, hashtag Ask Analog, what do you all think about some wanting to change his Sea of Thieves in-game mention? So I'm not familiar with that. So Oh, they're talking about, he was talking about Xbox Addict. He actually had a, uh, his name was on oh. some piece of scenery or something in a, in a ship that you could find. And, you know, they, they do like little yeah. shadows that are hidden yeah. in the game. Yeah. And I, I don't get the impression that they were gonna remove it i feel like they were gonna say they're gonna do something better like memorialize him in some sort of way so i'm yeah. not sure about that but i didn't get the impression that they were like oh we got to take him out now like yeah because that would be move. pretty terrible yeah yeah, yeah i would but like I don't to... know them to be terrible people no rares so. really really great guys you know and gals and it would be cool to see it like on a sale or something like that. Just his logo, you know? Yeah, there we go. Or yeah. some sort of hideaway island where you have to go and just get like yeah. Xbox themed loot. Secret quest. Yeah. Yeah. The addiction. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure they'll come up with something, some cool way to honor him. Yeah. So our next question is for our bro here, Dirty Bombs. And it's from Underdog10 in... I, I, I feel a showdown coming here. He says, how many swears? He says, how many swears will Dirty Bombs drop when I whip him in 1v1 on May 8th live on stream? Well, good, sir. What day is the 8th anyway? That's like a Tuesday, I think. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I got time to kick his ass. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Yeah, I'll pick his ass on Tuesday. That's a good way to spice up the week. He says, bring it. <laughs> it's already been brought, fool. <laughs> if you stuck around for that Iron Baron, you would have seen dirty, clean house. But no, someone had to go be no soul. Yeah. Anywho's, you know what? Just for him, I'm going to go ahead and just be that, that super pissed off, just like I'm so mad, I'm zen. I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Are you going to stream it? Hell yeah, he's well, he's gonna stream it. You know what I should do? I should stream it just being like, uh, like from a perception of just watching it. It's like we need a spectator mode. I can, I can like shout cast it for you guys. <laughs> You're gonna be our color man. Like, yeah, hey, then the dog with, awesome. with, oh, he's got the vigilance wing. Oh, he's got dirty around the corner. Oh, dirty with counteracts with a smoke grenade yeah. and an overbomb. <laughs> oh, I got a real humdinger here. <laughs> And there's the dirty bombs that he's down. Yeah. 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 Well, cool. Well, so our next one here is from our bro, Jumbaloo82. And he says, a new Battlefield is rumored to be launching this fall. Will we finally see Bad Company 3 or will we be going back to World War II or modern day? Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. What do you think? I would say... And the last Battlefield I played, I think, was 4, which was still pretty modern day. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah. I mean... I thought Battlefield not... 1 was good. Yeah. I mean, they they had some pretty good success with the World War Two type thing, or World War, the older stuff. 1? So, yeah. World War 1? That, that's it, right yeah, there. The one before 2? The 1. 1 before 2. <laughs> 1. <laughs> it is also 1 before 2, yeah. So, it would be cool to see World War 2. Um yeah, I don't know. I mean, it maybe modern day, maybe yeah. some kind of tie in there, you know. The Bad Company, I think, was one of the first Battlefield games I ever played. Um, yeah, so that'd be cool for a third. Didn't play two. Um, I don't know. Do you really think they would go after World War Two after uh, Call of Duty did? I maybe. I like mean, too soon or? I mean, that's why I'm probably leaning more toward like a modern day. Mm -hmm. Just because they got that in, it's kind of what everybody wanted at that time. Now everyone's kind of back into the modern kick, I guess you could say. So they got their boots on the ground. And said, like, "Oh yeah, I miss space. Yeah, I need some <laughs> space magic. Yeah." So, 
Well, cool, guys. I think that about wraps up the cast. So really appreciate all you guys hanging out here with us and just chatting with us and Absolutely. watching the stream and all you guys that listen to it on iTunes. We really appreciate it. So remember, if you like our podcast, don't forget to check out the cool cats at ninjapancake.com. And if you would like us on Facebook, leave us a review on iTunes and you can follow us all on Twitter. You got at Thaddeus Prime, at Dirty Bombs, at Circuit 8, and all of us at Millhorn Gaming. And remember, guys, when in doubt, blow it up! Explosion. <laughs> <laughs>